Marvel Rivals Season 4 has just been released, and I'm going to show you guys how to get the absolute best performance and lowest latency no matter your PC or laptop. With the arrival of Season 4, NetEase is claimed to have improved performance with this update. So did they actually do it? Uh, yeah. So let's take a look. Here are the performance tool results with Season 3 on the left and Season 4 on the right. Both have identical settings, which are 1440p DLSS performance using config optimized settings. You can see that they've improved the average FPS by 17 frames. And if you look at the condensed report, the 1% lows have gotten better by 20 FPS. Now, if we compare the matches from Season 3 to Season 4, while the maps may be different, they do perform largely the same. And much like the performance tool results, we are seeing a noticeable uplift in average FPS and 1% lows. Honestly, I didn't expect them to improve the performance this much, so kudos to NetEase for the effort. But they kind of had to do it otherwise. I'm opening a port. Anyway, let's get to optimizing the game. First up is going to be the NVIDIA app. We're going to use this to update the DLSS preset, which is currently 3.5 in Marvel Rivals to DLSS 4 Transformer model. This is so that we get better performance and image quality. Next, get the config files from my Google Drive, and uh, I'll show you where to put these later. And last, get Vibrance GUI. This is going to help with digital vibrancy and visibility. And again, I'll show you the side-by-side -side comparison later in the video so you can see if it's useful for you. All right, so before we get into the game, we're going to go ahead and go through some Windows tweaks as well as the NVIDIA control panel settings and the config files. So let's go ahead and start with the Windows stuff. So just go and click on your start button and in search, type in game mode, All right? Now, if for whatever reason your game mode is not enabled, go ahead and enable it. This is just going to help your Windows optimize any of the foreground apps like games, and turn off some of the telemetry in the background so you get more performance. And then go ahead and click graphics. And in here, before we get to the default graphics settings, there's going to be a list of programs and games here that Windows should automatically add. But uh, if it's not added, you could just go over here to custom options for apps, click browse. And then you could just go to wherever your game is installed, right? For me, it's in Steam for Marvel Rivals. Okay, and then you're just going to go ahead and find that. Um, it's in Marvel game and click Marvel.exe and add. Okay, mine's already here, so I'm not going to add it. And click options. Now, if you have a laptop or any PC that has integrated graphics, you're going to want to make sure that uh, high performance is checked for your dedicated GPU. Okay, and then click save. And you could do this for every one of your important applications and games in this list. And that's pretty much it. Now we're going to go to change default graphics settings. Click this. And the first thing you're going to see is hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Uh, you're going to want to turn this on. It's going to reduce latency and improve performance for your games. And if you're using something like frame generation or multi-frame generation, this is a mandatory setting that has to be on. Okay, so we'll go ahead and make sure that's enabled. Next option is variable refresh rate. Go ahead and turn this on. Uh, most games, most modern games are going to have variable refresh rate support anyway. So this is better for older games. And the third one, this is pretty big. Make sure your optimizations for windowed games is on. This is if you play uh, full screen borderless or borderless windowed. This makes sure that the latency is as close to exclusive full screen or full screen as possible. So if you're playing borderless, make sure this is on. It's going to give you the lowest input lag. And that's pretty much it for the uh, Windows tweaks. And now we're going to go to the NVIDIA control panel. Now for the NVIDIA control panel, there's honestly not too much to do. I'm just going to have you guys copy all of my settings. I could explain these one by one, but it's really not worth the time and it's out of the scope of this video. So I might make another video separately just for the NVIDIA control panel settings, but it's not like it's going to give you guys like, you know, those thumbnails that you see where it says like 60 FPS to like 300 FPS with the NVIDIA control panel settings. Don't fall for that bullshit. Okay, just go ahead and copy these settings. The only important ones I'm going to talk to you about are low latency mode. So in case a game that you're playing doesn't have NVIDIA reflex, you can go ahead and put this on on and ultra. This basically kind of acts like a reflex light where it caps your FPS to uh, under your monitor's refresh rate and it syncs your GPU and CPU time for uh, or frame queue for the lowest latency. So if you don't have reflex, again, you could use a low latency mode. And uh, this is actually pretty handy if you're using lossless scaling as well for or emulators and stuff. So keep that in mind. And if you also want to lock um, certain games to a max frame rate, you could also use it uh, right here on a driver level. You could choose your frame rate. I wouldn't uh, suggest using it on a global setting. It's better if you like find a game, like for example, if I'm playing Overwatch, right? And I want to lock it to like maybe, I don't know, 400 FPS. You could just go ahead and do that on a game by game basis. Okay, so next is going to be monitor technology. Now, if you have a G-Sync compatible monitor, I would highly suggest you use this um, along with a vertical sync, okay? This is going to give you the absolutely like the best uh, image quality without screen tearing. And especially with NVIDIA Reflex in games, it's just going to make it so that the latency is very low. 
Um, so those are pretty much the most important ones. Oh, and the uh, power management mode. Make sure this is not on prefer maximum performance for global settings, because if you leave it on prefer maximum performance, what's going to happen is your GPU is going to be running on like full tilt. Like even when you're just browsing Chrome and doing whatever, and you don't really need that, it's just wasting power draw and, uh, you know, more temps. Just keep it on normal. If you do need to use, you know, prefer maximum performance for whatever reason, again, do it on a game by game basis. You could just go ahead and choose the game and click that and then click apply. All right. And that's pretty much it for the control panel settings. Um, shader cache size, you could also keep 10, 100 or unlimited. This may help with certain games. It's not going to really do anything, but maybe for something like Elden Ring, I know uh, setting the shader cache in here might actually help with some of the stuttering. Other than that, everything else you guys could just copy and we're just going to leave it at that. And the next step is the config files. So this one is going to be for the optimized config and the potato config for you people with lower end PCs. And I'm going to show you where to put it. First, click run, or I mean type in run, all right? And you're going to want to enter percentage local app data percentage, okay? And then click okay. Then you're going to want to come down all the way to just Marvel. All right, click that. Click saved. Click config. Windows. And you're going to have these three files in here. Or actually, most of you are going to have only two of these. The scalability is like the actual config that uh, makes it optimized or potato. So once you have this, right, you're going to want to choose based on the PC that you have, or if you want really like the best performance um, uh, completely, all you do is copy this and drag it in here and replace. All right. So for me, these are both on C drive. So it's just going to fucking, yeah, <laughs> but you get the point. Basically just choose whichever one you want. Now, obviously I'm going to show you the performance difference um, later on with a uh, native versus config uh, optimized versus potato. But yeah, that's pretty much going to be it for um, the config files. And now we're going to go into the game and I'll show you what the individual settings do and talk about image quality as well. Okay, so here we are in the Marvel Rivals game game settings. And we're just going to go through a couple of these settings before we um, go through the image quality comparisons. So first things first, obviously get your main monitor as the target display. Uh, and for display mode, for me, I play on borderless windowed, uh, but you could choose any of these because we enabled the optimized uh, windowed game mode in the game settings. So it'll be pretty good latency for pretty much any of these. Then over here, all right. So we're actually, I'm going to show you an example between all of these. So you guys can see for yourself for image quality. My preferred way to play this game is with DLSS transformer model and set to performance. Okay. This is going to give you the best mix of performance and image quality. Again, I'll show you afterwards with side by sides. So you guys can see for yourself sharpening. I keep at a hundred. DLSS frame generation is off for me. I don't like using it for online games. It's not terrible if you have a really, really high frame rate as a base starting point, but for majority of you guys, I would not suggest keeping this on, especially if you're a high level player. I um, mean, you probably already know not to keep it on, but just for everyone else. Yeah, don't don't use this if you care about uh, competitive, right? Re uh, reflex of latency, you're going to want to check this. Everyone who can uh, for NVIDIA GPUs, check this. This is just going to help with your latency. It's going to cut down as much as it can, no matter your frame rate. And it's just going to be good for uh, the entire... Um, you know, click to photon latency for gaming, right? Any game that has reflex, just turn it on. Uh, then limit FPS. Now this one is actually going to be very handy. That goes in tandem with reflex. Reflex already caps your FPS lower than your monitor's refresh rate. And if you're struggling to hit anything close to that, like let's say you have a 144 hertz monitor, but you're getting like maybe 90 FPS average, uh, which by the way, you can use the, the performance test here. It'll go through an entire benchmark, a really heavy workload of a benchmark that'll find the exact um, average FPS that you need. So let's say that it, it comes to around 90. You're going to want to just put 90 in here, okay? Even if at some maps or some parts it goes up to 100 or 120, if the benchmark tells you that the average is 90 while it's throwing like all the alts and hammering your CPU and GPU, just put 90. What this does is it keeps your CPU and GPU at a proper 90 uh, frame pacing setting. And if you pair that with reflex, it's just going to cut down the latency further because your CPU and your GPU are going to be synced together when pushing frame cues. Uh, it's just going to make your experience a lot better input wise. And that is actually the best way to play. Some uh, people might think that 
keeping your FPS unlocked, going up and down, up and down all the time is the best. And if if it's really, really high, right? Like 300 plus or 400, sure. But the best uh, practice is to actually find a proper average FPS number so that your CPU and GPU can be synced together to push out the frames. When you do this, right? For example, in my case, if I play at 360 uh, hertz or 360 FPS, I actually have higher latency than just locking it at 300 because, again, your frame is not going to stay at 360 all the time. It's going to go up and down, up and down based on what's going on, what map it is. So finding a average FPS that's uh, really good for syncing your CPU and GPU along with reflex or low latency in the NVIDIA control panel is just going to be the best input lag experience. And that's pretty much how it's done. Right, so if you want to limit FPS, make sure this is clicked. Um, show FPS, show network stats. That's preference. It's the little thing up here. VSync is going to be off in the game. We already have G-Sync and VSync on in the control panel, NVIDIA control panel. Game language preference. Now everything here is already set from the conflict file I showed you earlier. You don't have to touch anything in here, but if you do, right, uh, you can if it's preference. But there is one setting that I'm going to give you like a little PSA on. FX detail should be set to high. If you want to see Hela or Wanda when they press shift, right, they turn it, Hela turns into a raven and she has like a little trail behind the raven. Might be good to see where she's escaping to. Um, personally, I don't really have any issues with that, but if you do, you're going to want to keep this to high. Any character that has like an escape ability that has a little VFX trail, keeping this to high will just make sure that it, it's there, right? But if you need absolutely the max performance, just keep this on low. It's going to be fine. Uh, so you don't, you guys don't have to touch this. But if you know what you're doing and you want very specific settings in here for, you know, if you just like the way the game looks, um, go ahead and tinker with that on your, you know, preference. And that's pretty much it for all of this stuff. Now back to this. I'm going to show you a image comparison between all of these. And then I'm going to show you how to enable DLSS4 transformer model because the game natively doesn't have it. It's a DLSS 3.5. So let's go ahead and do that now. Here are all the upscalers and anti-aliasing methods the game natively supports. I've laid them out from the left side being the best image quality to the right having the worst image quality. All of these are set to performance mode and you can see that DLSS transformer model has the sharpest image with the least amount of image instability and flickering. Next, Epic TSR is uh, decent uh, image quality, but in motion it's going to fall apart compared to DLSS. There's going to be a lot of ghosting and trailing. It's the same for FSR and XCSS. Um, it's just, if you have an AMD or Intel GPU and you have no other choice, try maybe balanced or quality presets and uh, see what kind of performance you get. Otherwise, stick to performance mode and hopefully it's uh, still playable for you guys. And last and certainly least, TAAU. Just ignore this shit. It looks like Vaseline smeared poo poo. And we're going to move on to the NVIDIA app tutorial so you guys can enable DLSS4 transformer model. Once you have your NVIDIA app open, come down here to settings. And then games and apps, click view and modify. This is going to be a list of directories that the app is going to scan already on your PC. If for whatever reason it doesn't find your specific drive that has all of your games, click add and then find the drive of your choice. So mine's going to be F and then click select folder. Then it'll get added down here and click close. Then click scan now. And it's going to just go through that entire drive and find all of the games. Obviously for me, it's already been done. And once you're done with that, go to graphics. And this is going to be your list of uh, compatible games that NVIDIA has support for within the app. Go to Marvel Rivals, and you're going to ignore this in-game settings part because we already did everything before, and the config file already has everything set. So come down here to where it says DLSS override model presets, click this, and if you want to keep it real simple, click latest and press apply. And you could do this for all of your games. If you want to do it for Overwatch, you could do the same thing. Just click this, click latest, and it's going to have the latest version of DLSS 4 already um, applied. So once that's done, um, you can actually, let me show you. Make sure your NVIDIA overlay is on. So this is how we're going to check if the uh, DLSS override worked. Once this is on, press Alt-Z to pop this menu up right here. And what you can do is you can add overlay statistics down here by pressing Alt-R. And you can see on the top right that it appeared here. So right now, this is how it looks by default. So I'm going to show you how to add the uh, DLSS um, override. Let me show you right here. So go all the way to Custom. Click View All. And you can just copy what I have checked here. These are going to be the most important ones anyway. So if you want to use this overlay to actually monitor your games, you can just use these. And then the important one that I wanted to show you is down here, Super Resolution Model Override. So what this does over here is if it says Preset K, which is the latest DLSS4 preset, that means the override worked. 
So when you go into the game and load up, load up a practice range or a real match, you should see it up here where it says preset K. If it doesn't show up here, that means you have to do the uh, pr this process again where you go into graphics and make sure that this is set to the latest, okay? And now I'll show you a comparison of what DLSS3 versus DLSS4 looks like so you can see the improvements in image quality. On the left side, we have 1440p DLSS3 set to performance mode, which is 720p internally. And on the right, we have the same thing, but with the new transformer model uh, DLSS4 override we just did. You can see that the DLSS3 preset that comes with the game is inferior in terms of image stability, has a lot of flickering, and is worse in motion. The newer DLSS4 transformer model greatly improves and even enhances all of these deficiencies to an impressive extent. It does come at a performance cost of 5-10%, to but in my opinion, the improvement in sharpness, motion clarity, and image stability is well worth the effort to enable it. However, feel free to use whichever upscaler works best for you. And for the EMD guys, I suggest you use FSR4. It's going to be very similar to DLSS4 in terms of image quality. And now we'll move on to the Vibrance GUI tutorial. Okay, so once you have Vibrance GUI downloaded, go ahead and open it up. It's just going to be this one EXE. There's no install for it, so you can just keep it anywhere you want, including your desktop or your um, storage device, wherever. And once it's open, uh, all this does is it lets you enable a digital vibrancy that you could do in NVIDIA control panel um, on a per game basis. So obviously we don't want to do it on a Windows level because it'll just oversaturate everything and that's not good for everyday browsing. Uh, or maybe it is for you, but not for most people. So before we get to this, uh, make sure auto start Vibrance GUI, affect primary monitor only, and never change the resolution is checked. And then in here are going to be your applications where you want to add digital vibrance. So if you have Marvel Rivals or any game running in the background, you can just click add and then select that game or application and it'll show up in here. And if you want to add it manually, you can click add manually. So this is actually the directory where the Marvel Win64 shipping exe is. This is the actual game exe. So you can actually follow this path and find it here. Okay, and then you can click open and it'll get added. So once it's added in here, you could just open it up and then add your preferred color vibrance um, for Marvel Rivals. Now, I prefer just adding 10% on my OLED monitor. It's already plenty colorful, but this 10% just gives it that extra pop that I prefer. And since there's no HDR, I kind of need um, a little bit more saturation from the game. So it, it, it's very preference or monitor dependent. So you guys, I would suggest you try it out. Um, and I'll show you what it looks like so you can see for yourself. So here we have Vibrance GUI off on the left side, which is 50%. Uh, that's default Windows digital vibrancy. And Vibrance GUI at 60% on the right side. So it's not going to be anything too mind-blowing. I just thought I'd include this because um, a lot of people I've seen online are searching for how to make your game look more colorful or contrasty with filters and stuff. But uh, obviously NVIDIA filters does have a performance penalty. So I just thought I'd show a little uh, lightweight program like this. This is only for digital vibrance. It's not going to help you do anything else extra, um, any more than just adding saturation to your game, which it does pretty well. I mean, uh, in my opinion, the game just pops and looks better with a little more saturation. So I thought I'd show this off for anyone who's interested. And with that, let's move on to the last comparison, which is going to be native 1440p low settings in game versus our config optimized settings and the potato settings in an actual match. So here's that comparison I mentioned 0.5 seconds ago. And with that, boys and girls, the 2% of girls watching, we've come to the last part of the video. You can see the average FPS between the three modes, and my personal recommendation is going to be the middle section, which is the config optimized settings file. In my opinion, this is as good as it gets for image quality while retaining most of the default low graphic settings on top of the additional performance gains. The potato is going to come in handy for those of you who are struggling to get playable frame rates, especially on laptops and budget PCs. So I hope this will help you guys out to enjoy the game much better. Unfortunately, if your CPU bottleneck, there's not much we can do because NetEase does not allow us to change the CPU affinity or disable Core Zero in this game, at least not to my knowledge anymore. Um, I tried Process Lasso and a couple of registry files that don't do anything, so yeah, it's not looking too good for that. But if you guys know a workaround, please feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. All right, well, that's going to do it for this one. I hope you guys found this guide useful, and if you did, please consider subbing to the channel and hitting that like button. Any support is appreciated since I'm just starting out. And as always, thanks for watching.